Hello, and welcome back to the nephrology curriculum. Today, we're going to be talking about nephritic syndromes. Nephritic syndromes are part of the glomerular diseases, and I can say as a nephrologist, they're probably one of the most exciting aspects of my job. So when we think about acute nephritic syndrome, it's characterized by five different components from the clinical standpoint. This includes hematuria of glomerular origin. That means that when I look at the urine underneath a microscope, I can see what we call dysmorphic red blood cells. That means that the red blood cell has a funny shape to it. So if you look at the normal red blood cell, you can see that it's beautifully shaped, circular in appearance. But when you see a dysmorphic red blood cell, there are these little blebs all over the membrane. And sometimes they even take on a Mickey Mouse appearance. It's not uncommon for us to call them Mickey Mouse cells. We can also see red blood cell casts, and that means that these red blood cells collect in the tubule, they bind with that TAM horsefall protein, and they form this beautiful cylindrical cast full of red blood cells with just a slight reddish hue. We also see proteinuria in our nephritic patients, and that proteinuria is usually between 150 milligrams to three and a half grams per day. So what we would term sub-nephrotic. Again, uh, we can have some patients who have greater than three and a half grams of proteinuria, even though they have nephritic syndrome. And these are typically patients who have overlap syndromes. That includes membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis and lupus nephritis, which we're going to be talking about today. Azotemia also characterizes nephritic syndrome. That means we have an elevated blood urea nitrogen. Typically, that BUN to creatinine ratio is greater than 15. And oliguria, our patients are classically oliguric, meaning that they make less than 500 mils of urine per day. And finally, hypertension. Patients who have acute nephritic syndrome will manifest with higher blood pressures. This is typically because they are volume overloaded. These patients are retaining sodium. And it's interesting because they actually have suppression of the renin-angio-aldo system. And essentially, they have an increase in the sodium-potassium ATPase at that principal cell that's responsible for that sodium uptake leading to volume overload. So when we think about the different types of disorders that manifest as acute nephritic syndrome, they include membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis. It's a little bit difficult to say, so we like to abbreviate that as MPGN. There's IgA nephropathy, post-infectious glomerular nephritis, and some people refer to that as infection-associated glomerular nephritis, lupus nephritis, and then there are the rapidly progressive glomerular nephritides. And what that means is that patients clinically have a rapid deterioration in their renal function. And morphologically, when we biopsy these patients, on pathology, we see something called necrosis and crescents. These include anti-GBM disease, good pasture syndrome, if it includes both lung and kidney, the immune complex is diseases that I just spoke about, that includes lupus, IgA, post-infectious, and MPGN. If they manifest with a rapid deterioration in renal function and morphologically they have crescents and necrosis on pathology, those patients would be considered uh, in RPGN. And finally, the posse immune glomerular nephritides, and that includes our ANCA-associated vasculitides.